Hey everybody, Martin and Joni back here. And uh, this video is our RV trip to Maine. Was it worth it? Yeah. Coming up from RGV, taking three and a half months, 2,400 miles, uh, and then staying here for about 15, 16 weeks. Was this all worth it? We're going to give you a recap of this whole adventure coming up on RV Street. We have already posted several videos uh, of other areas we've explored up here in Maine, like the uh, Galen uh, Cole Family Land Transportation Museum. We went there, it was in Bangor. Uh, that was a pretty cool place. Yeah. Um, and then um, we did a video on when we went way up north, uh, right below the Canadian border to uh, Lubeck, and uh, explored that area. Um, there was Scudic Park, uh, uh, was it? Scudic Peninsula. Scudic Peninsula. Which is actually part of Acadia Park, National Park. Right, right. Um, then of course across from Scudic Peninsula there was uh, Mount Desert Island, which is part, the big part, the most popular part yeah. um, of uh, Acadia National Park. Um, we were we've told you earlier we're going to do a video on that we just haven't had time to put that together but that will be coming up if you ever go to Acadia National Park on Mount Desert Island we highly suggest you do it by the around the end of May mm, yeah or after Labor Day it uh, is crazy crowded otherwise yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, very busy uh, we give a little bit of that insight uh, on that uh, park when we did the Scudic, uh, the Scudic Peninsula video. The really cool thing for us is we parked our motorhome at my brother's house or on his property, mm -hmm. um, which is in Bucksport, Maine. Yeah. And this really allowed us to go and see all of the sites around. Yep. They were within an hour, hour and a half. Um, and we didn't have to move every couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, he had two and a half uh, acres of property or so, and uh, he had his own life. We had ours. We didn't get in each other's way, and uh, it was re really nice because, like she said, we were within an hour, hour and a half of any of the main. Pretty much everything. Yeah. You know, it was very gracious of him to yeah. let us stay there. So, like we just listed, we have been to other places and did videos on that. Some of the other places that we went, we're going to kind of do an overview, a quick overview of these places, and then uh, at the very end, sum up whether this whole trip was even worth it or not. Yeah. Mount Batty, for example, it's located in the Camden Hills State Park. Yeah. Uh, it's about two miles north of the little town of Camden. Uh, and of course, at Mount Batty, we have the Mount Batty Tower. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, while we were there, um, it, it's a, we really didn't like the park that much. No, we really didn't. Uh, it had the tower and, oh, and we saw two aliens. <laughs> now, I know you're going to think we're crazy, but Seriously. we saw them and we photographed them. So, you know, you gauge for yourself, yep. but it was pretty freaky. Yeah. I think the only thing that I really liked about that park was the fact that we had a beautiful view of Camden Harbor. Yeah, and the coastline. You could see yeah. Camden Harbor and then down south and up. I mean, the whole coastline of Maine is unbelievably pretty. But I really wouldn't recommend going to that particular state park. No, there's nothing there. It costs too much. Uh, and yeah. There you go. Blah. So after we got through with uh, the uh, state park, Mount Batty State Park, we went on down the road and we went to Camden. It's a very small little town, a uh, little harbor town. 
Yeah. Uh, maybe a half a mile wide. I mean, you come down out of the mountains and uh, on the coastline, and around you go, and there it is, and it's gone. <laughs> I Just mean, like that. yeah. But it's a pretty little harbor town. Uh, lots of boats, little shops, places to eat. We brought mm -hmm. our picnic and ate. Mm -hmm. a, we had a picnic there on the side of the hill, and um, around the whole marina, which is huge, mm, yeah. like two, three miles that comes in with mountains on both sides, and there's homes all along the sides of there. Wow, just breathtaking uh, homes up in there. It's a very, very pretty town. Yeah. A very quaint little town. Yeah. So after Mount Batty... We went to Martin's favorite little town, Ellsworth. I really liked Ellsworth. Uh, it's a pretty little town. Um, t and Ellsworth is one of these transitional towns. Uh, pretty much anywhere you want to go along the coastline in the mid part of Maine, you got to go through Ellsworth. Uh, Ellsworth is a quaint town. It's bigger mm -hmm. than most. Yeah. Um, but it, it, but it's a it's a shopping hub town too. Yeah, it has all your major stores. Like there's a Walmart and a Home Depot, or you know the kind of bigger stores that you're yep. accustomed to going to. Mm -hmm. um, it has a lot of little shops and cobblestone robes, uh, roads, and uh, but it has some of the modern big stores too. And pretty much every time we went through there, Martin goes, I really like this town. <laughs> yeah, it was one of my favorites. Fort Knox. Uh, we went to Fort Knox. Yep. Uh, Fort Knox is a state it's a, park. It's a state park. It's a, it's, a state, it's a state historical park. It's right there in Bucksport. <clears throat> it was about 20 minutes from yeah. where we were parked. Uh, so we saw it all the time. We'd go into Bucksport and get groceries. We'd go to Bucksport. We found a dentist here. Uh, and, it, it, and it's right, the fort is right on the Penobscot River. Yeah. And it was built for... It was built to, let's see if I do this yeah. right. It was built to protect Bangor. Um, when we were afraid of British invasion, mm -hmm. Bangor was a really big hub and you had to go down the Penobscot River to get to Bangor. Mm -hmm. So that fort was built to protect Bangor. Mm -hmm. and, and the central part of, of the main coastline, too. The, the Penobscot River comes right in off the coast and then branches off. And so they built Fort Knox. And the, <laughs> the cannons and the fortress that this mm. thing is built out of granite. Yes. Yes. And they had these ginormous cannons and hundreds of them. Uh, they they uh, stored all their food underground. And it, it's just a tremendous thing. You know, oddly enough, I really wasn't looking forward to going to Fort Knox. I was like, eh, you know, I'm not a real history buff. But we got in there and I was really quite fascinated yeah. with it. Uh, we have all the content to do a video on that too. <laughs> Haven't done that yet. But uh, anyway, Fort Knox is another one of the places uh, that we've gone to and have really enjoyed. You remember when we did the bathroom remodel in RGV last, uh, last winter? Did it in the beach scene, uh, by the ocean, all that type of stuff. Well, one of the things that I wanted to do when we came up here to Maine is I wanted to get some a couple little pieces of driftwood. Um, to kind of put those little final touches on the bathroom. So we asked Randy, where can we get her brother? Uh, where can we get some driftwood around here? And yeah. he said... Sears Island. <laughs> we went to Sears Island. and I loved Sears Island. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, in fact, Martin's daughter came to visit us for a few days, and mm -hmm. that was one of the places that I absolutely insisted that we go to because I just love this spot. I knew she would love it, too. Yeah, it's a public place. Uh, it's a place where it's, it's right off Highway mm -hmm. 1. So you just cruise down Highway 1, make a left, go, in, go out towards the coast about a mile, mile and a half, and bingo, there's Sears Island. You can do one of two things at Sears Island. You can walk up and go way deep into the interior of the island, or you can go around the outside border and the coastline of the island, 
is, and that's what we did. Yeah. Uh, going around the outside of the uh, coastline of the island, there is there's more driftwood there <laughs> than you could believe. I mean, it's you could never drag it all home. Yeah, I mean, it's just amazing amount of driftwood, and so a lot of people have made uh, artwork. Well, artwork of yeah. all different kinds. They've stacked it together. They've made teepees. They've done uh, all kinds of different artwork with it. But it's also a great place to like find shells. Uh, you find really, really yeah. unique rocks. Oh God, yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a hiking splendor. It's got a little bit of wood. It's got a little bit of rock. It's got all kinds of seashells. The waves kind of gently crashing on the shore, mm -hmm. uh, birds, um, and of course there was. I found a tremendous amount of seaweed, and I <laughs> thought it would really look good as an addition or an extension to my current ponytail or earrings. Yeah, I found some earrings too. Um, you let us know what you think about that. I thought it looked awesome. Mean, eh, maybe not so yeah, much. Yeah, well, I'm going to leave it for them. Yeah. I want, I want the public to vote. Ah, yeah. Ah, uh, uh, Southwest Harbor. Southwest Harbor is tiny. Uh, we kind of stumbled upon it when we kind of got lost at one point in time. Uh, so much for GPS, but uh, yeah, Southwest Harbor is a very quaint, tiny little town, um, but pretty in its own right. Yeah, yeah, it's a little jewel that, like she said, we found by accident. Uh, Mount Desert Island is when we were there. It's 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 easy to kind of get disorientated, and this particular time we didn't even have a map, so yeah. we were really weren't sure where we were. And uh, when you're on Mount Desert Island, you do not have cell phone service. You're out in the boonies. Indeed. And uh, so we were just kind of, we stopped and asked a couple of locals where we were, where we wanted to go. It's like, and, what's going on? And we ran across Southwest Harbor. Beautiful little, again, harbor town. Uh, moored boats. Few little seafood mm -hmm. places to eat. Uh, very, very nice, very quiet, very... Uh, quaint. And serene. Yeah. I keep using the word quaint. Yeah. <laughs> but it is. Quit quainting. Quit quainting? <laughs> well, I can't quit quainting. It's hard to do when you're talking about Maine because everything in Maine is... Out in the boonies and quaint. And quaint. <laughs> well, one of the really super cool things that... Well, I think it is anyway, is Wheel of, of Fortune. Fortune. We're big Wheel of Fortune fans because it's America's favorite game. Indeed. And uh, we watch it almost every night if mm -hmm. we're home and we can get TV. One night while we were up here, we were watching uh, Wheel of Fortune. And, you know, during one of their commercial breaks, they said, oh, by the way, Wheel of Fortune is going to be coming up to Maine this July, and it showed the Winnebago and the trailer going across the screen. I was like, oh my God, Martin, we've got to go see this. And I'm like, yeah, they do that Winnebago and the, ta and the trailer thing in the advertisement. I wonder if they're actually going to bring it here, mm -hmm. right? We thought we just had to take the chance. Why not? So uh, we went to the Collins Center for the Arts which is just north of Maine, uh, north of Bangor. It was in Orono, Maine? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. And we decided to go early in the morning. We didn't want to audition for the show. To, Although we should have. We would have won a fortune. I know, right? But we wanted to get there early before the crowds, and hopefully the Winnebago and the trailer was going to be there, so we left. And when we got there, it was in the, the the Winnebago was there. Yep. The trailer was there. Yep. And there were no people. No cars. No the, people. No nothing. They, it was sitting in an empty parking lot, and so Joni are like, "Oh my God, I can't believe this!" Yay! So we got our pictures. We took our pictures, um, and uh, we are now officially Wheel of Fortune. America's favorite game, pretend Vanna White and, and Pat, Pat Sajak. Sajak. Yeah, that was really cool. Indeed.
So that kind of gives a overview and a cap, a recap of some of the other places that we went. So it really begs the question then, was it worth it? Was it worth it? I mean, all that driving, staying up here, enjoying 80, 85 degree weather, blue skies, wonderful coastlines, places to eat, moored boats, wonderful places to visit, hike and explore. Was it worth it? Oh, indeed. <laughs> oh, should I say, oh, hell yeah. Hell yes, it was <laughs> worth it. Uh, no traffic? No traffic. Ever? Uh, we ran into traffic, and and this really, from where most of us here and you guys, where you live, and traffic and commute, back, nothing like that. Oh, yeah, you wouldn't even consider The most traffic. traffic would be, oh my gosh, look at all the cars coming out of the National Park. We're only doing 40 miles an hour. <laughs> you know, there's a whole line of them. You, that's about it as far as traffic. Now, I got to say, you don't go anywhere fast. No. Um, everywhere you go there, uh, and I said to Martin on several occasions, wherever we go, I feel like I'm out in the boonies. And we are. We always were. Uh, yeah. You do not jump in the car and run to the store in 10 minutes. No, no. No matter where you are. It's not like you can jump on a highway and get to where you're going. You are going to drive around. And sometimes it, these roads, they don't even have like striped lines yeah, on them. Yeah, yeah. There, you'll have a city, got a few stores, and then the roads just branch off of there and you're just driving through the woods again. It's, it's like you're randomly driving around, but there is actually a destination. You just don't know where the hell it is. Most of the population lives here on these winding forest, never-ending roads. Mm. You'll be going down a road and there's this house, it'll be a house here and another, they're just randomly spotted all around. I mean, yeah. it's very beautiful, but uh, you just don't go somewhere in a fresh hurry. Fresh seafood. Yeah. Uh, fresh, fresh. <laughs> I think you said fresh. That means caught either yesterday or this morning. Fresh seafood everywhere around here. I had some of the most awesome sea scallops. I mean, it has been years. Probably when I was lived in Maine was the last time I had sea scallops like that. They yeah. were amazing. Yeah, and I don't even like scallops. And I had some, and I was like, oh my God, these are sweet. Yeah. They were tender. I mean, but we had scallops. We had lobster. We had cod we had haddock haddock we had halibut we've had halibut and, and and like i said did, did i say it was fresh uh yeah i think you said it was you, fresh. you, you don't go to the store and buy it. yeah i take some frozen this you know this was caught and usually in the last 24 hours mm -hmm. uh th this incredible now i have to make a confession maine is known for their lobster rolls uh, yeah. I am not a fan of mixing mayonnaise with a beautiful lobster and putting it on a bun. So <laughs> therefore, mm -hmm. I did not eat a lobster roll. No. Yeah, and she told me, Martin, you're not going to, you don't want to eat in a lobster mm -hmm. roll. Yeah. Uh, we had lobster, but not lobster rolls. Uh, one other thing that Maine is really big on is those pink hot dogs. Oh, gross. <laughs> I've never seen, have you guys seen, have you ever seen a pink hot dog? Or red hot dog. Yeah, they're called reds, but they're pink. Yeah. We, we went to a family get together because a lot of her family is still here in Maine. And uh, you remember when we did the video on going up to Lubeck? Well, that's where we were yeah. going. They had these pink hot dogs, but everybody eats these things here. Yeah, I said, Martin, uh, you need to try one of these. And I did. I don't eat them. <laughs> they're, they're, first of all, when you snap, there's nothing meaty. It's like, is this a is this a one of those baseball franks? Uh, uh, no, it's these little snappy things. It's uh, I don't even know what's what they're made of. It's one of those things that you know you were kind of born and raised with. Otherwise, they're just nasty, and in our minds, they're just nasty. Now you put them on the grill and you grill them. You get the nice blackened well, lines yeah, like on a hot them. Dog. But they're pink. And, 
and, and they don't taste like, you know, Oscar Mayer wieners or ballpark franks. I don't know what they taste. But anyway, uh, that was kind of yeah. kind of weird. But oh, and by the way, when we were up there at that family reunion, one of our nephews, our little nephews, he came running down to see us. He's like, Uncle Martin, Aunt Joe. Oh my God! I'm so excited to see. You. I mean, this guy's got personality out a, the water. A lot of personality. I mean, he, this kid is just um, lots of personality. He's like, can we? Can I be in one of your videos? Oh, can he, I be in one of your videos? Yeah, he just so wanted to be in one of our. And he's he's like, so anyway, so we gave. He had a couple of words to say that he wanted to tell all of our YouTube followers or fans. So we gave him a little spot. Let's just see what he has to say real quick here. I love it. I am just shocked right now. <laughs> Have you seen any of Uncle Martin's videos on YouTube yet? Only a couple. Okay, did you like them? I love them. <laughs> they are amazing. I would have subscribed to them, but I don't know how to. Um, I have to make up an email and stuff. Um, my parents don't want me to, so. Is that cute or what? We're on our way back to Texas. We're shooting this actually in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. We just left Maine yesterday. Mm -hmm. So that's it for now. This is RV Street. Stick, Stick around. around.